Hey guys, Miss Hewitt here, and today I'm going to be reading you Last Stop on Market Street. Um, I hadn't heard about this book until probably about two years ago. One of my um, college professors read it to me in a reading class, and I fell in love with it. So I went ahead and bought it and thought it would be great for you guys to listen to today. So it has um, a Caldecott medal, a Newbery medal, and a Coretta Scott King medal. So a very, very good book. And this is written by Matt De La Pena, and the pictures are by Christian Robinson. So let's go ahead and get on into it. CJ pushed through the church doors and skipped down the steps. The, air, the outside air smelled like freedom, but it also smelled like rain, which freckled CJ's shirt and dripped down his nose. He ducked under his Nana's umbrella, saying, How come we gotta wait for this bus in all the wet? Trees get thirsty too, his Nana told him. Don't you see that big one drinking through a straw? CJ looked for a long time, but never saw a straw. What do you think that she's referring to when she says a straw? I'm thinking that she refers to the branches as being the straw, or maybe the limbs. From the bus stop, we watched water pool on fl flower petals, watched rain patter against the windshield of a nearby car. His friend Colby climbed in and gave CJ a wave, driving off with his dad. Nana, how come we don't got a car? So I think this is Colby right here, and Colby's dad, and there's CJ waving to Colby, waiting at the bus stop. Boy, what do we need a car for? We've got a bus that breathes fire. And Mr. Old Dennis, who always has a trick for you. The bus creaked to a stop in front of them. It sighed and sagged, and the doors swung open. What's that I see, Mr. Dennis asked. He pulled a coin from behind CJ's ear and placed it in his palm. Nana laughed her deep laugh, and CJ pushed along. They sat right up front. The man across the way was tuning a guitar, and an old woman with curlers had butterflies in a jar. Nana gave everyone a great big smile and said, Good afternoon. She made sure CJ did the same. So obviously Nana's trying to teach CJ to make sure you have mem manners. The bus lurched forward and stopped. Lurched forward and stopped. Nana hummed as she knit. How come we always gotta go here after church? CJ said. Miguel and Kobe never have to go anywhere. I feel sorry for those boys, she told him. They'll never get a chance to meet Babu or the sunglass man. And I hear Trixie got herself a brand new hat. CJ stood at the window, only feeling sorry for himself. He watched cars zip by on either side, watched a group of boys hop curbs on bikes. A man climbed aboard with a spotted dog. CJ gave up his seat. How come that man can't see? Boy, what do you know about seeing? Nana told him. Some people watch the world with their ears. That's a fact. Their noses, too, the man said, sniff sniffling at the air. That's a mighty fine perfume you're wearing today, ma'am. Nana squeezed the man's hand and laughed her deep laugh. Two older boys got on next. CJ watched as they moved on by and stood in back. Sure wish I had one of those, he said. Nana sat down her knitting. What for? You got the real live thing sitting across from you. Why don't you ask the man if he'll play us a song? CJ didn't have to. The guitar player was already plucking strings and began to sing. To feel the magic of music, the blind man whispered. I like to close my eyes, too. Nana, I like to close my eyes. Nana closed hers, too. So did CJ and the dog and the spotted dog. And in the darkness, the rhythm lifted CJ off the bus, out of the bus city. He saw sunset colors swirling over crashing waves. He saw a family of hawks slicing through the sky. Saw the old woman's butterflies dancing free in the light of the moon. CJ's chest grew full and he was lost in the sound and the sound gave him the feeling of magic. The song ended and CJ's eyes and CJ opened his eyes. Everyone on the bus clapped, even the boys in the back. Nana glanced at the coin in CJ's palm. 
CJ dropped it in the man's hat. Last stop on Marcus Street, Dennis called. CJ looked as he stepped off the bus. Crumbling sidewalks and broken down doors, graffiti tagged windows and boarded up stores. He reached for his Nana's hand. How come it's always so dirty over here? She smiled and pointed to the sky. Sometimes when you're surrounded by dirt, CJ, you're a better witness. Whew, sorry guys. Sometimes when you're surrounded by dirt, CJ, you're a better witness for what's beautiful. CJ saw the perfect rainbow arching over their soup kitchen. He wondered how his Nana always found beautiful wherever or where he never even thought to look. He looked all around them again, at the bus rounding the corner out of sight, and the broken street lamps still lit up bright, and the stray cat shadows moving across the wall. When he spotted their familiar faces in the window, he said, I'm glad we came. Oh. Oh, I didn't skip a page. <laughs> That's just them going to their soup kitchen. He thought his Nana might laugh, her deep laugh, but she didn't. She patted him on the head and told him, me too, CJ. Now, come on. So that's everyone eating together at a soup kitchen. And that's the end of the book. So, I love this book because I love how CJ's grandma finds the beauty in the world, even when CJ struggles to see it. So I hope that everyone has someone who can see the beauty in the world, or maybe you see it for other people. So have a great day and catch me on the next video for another read aloud. Have a great day, y'all.